Hey, today is day 9 and we are looking at the spiritual fruits of gentleness, also translated and known as meekness and humility. Perhaps a better way to understand this fruit is by looking into the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we, Jesus was captured and, and went to the trial, his opponents uh, were very angry with him. They demanded blood and cried out repeatedly, crucify him, crucify him. Eventually, they did just that, despite of his innocence. In great contrast, all those uh, he was despised and rejected, Jesus faced the hostile physical and emotional attack with great calm, restraint and dignity. His prayer to the Father was forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And he was gentle and submissive to God's plan. I think this is the greatest manifestation of the fruits of meekness and gentleness. God became man and died for man. 700 years before that, the prophet Isaiah prophesied about this coming Messiah and the suffering servant who loved the hopeless and gentle towards the fragile who are beaten, battled and bruised. In Isaiah 42 verse 3 is written, A bruised reed he will not break, a smoldering reed he will not snuff out. In Matthew 11 verse 28 and 29, Jesus invites those who are uh, weary and heavy laden to come to him and promise to give them rest and to treat them gently. Uh, from here we can conclude that a disciple who are bearing this fruit of gentleness are those who are submissive to God's will, persevering is God's will when placed in the position of weakness. Uh, they are not overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. They treat others uh, with patience and with empathy uh, because they put themselves in their place and identify with them just like Christ uh, came down to be with us and identified with our weakness. Unfortunately, our society do not a treasure, does not treasure or value these traits of uh, meekness and gentleness and is often viewed as weakness rather than strength. This perhaps make these fruits all the harder to develop and perhaps all the more precious. But according to Mother Teresa, humility is the mother of all virtue and she said, if we are humble, nothing can touch us. Not praise nor disgrace because we know who we are. So what is the importance or benefit of these fruits of gentleness? Uh, number one, like all fruits, is pointed back to the Father. Therefore, it glorify Him and we give Him all the praise who give us the yield. Uh, number two, it helps to unite the church in love and as commanded by God and as a testimony to the unbelieving world, world that the gospel is the only way man can reconcile back to God and to reconcile back to each other despite our diverse background. And when we walk in loneliness and gentleness, and not quarrelsome, not envy, not hatred, no faction, no discord, no jealousy, or we esteem others better than ourselves, this helps to promote openness and trust and edifying one another. Humble and gentle people become mutually useful uh, to each other. Number three, it helps in soul winning. Gentleness and humility draw people to God. Uh, being not harsh, not argumentative, uh, calmness under provocations, uh, respectful are commanded of us. Always be ready to give defense to anyone who asks to account for the hope and the confidence that's within you. Uh, yet do this with gentleness and respect. First Peter 3 verse 15, the Amplified Version. Number four, probably the most critical one. Uh, God's kingdom belongs only to those who are meek. Matthew 5, 5 and Galatians 5, 21. So how do we uh, cultivate and develop these fruits of gentleness? Uh, like all fruits, it is a direct result and manifestation of our abiding and a union with Christ Jesus and of us keeping the commandment of God. Uh, John 15 verse 4 and 5 and 10. Hence the essence of this spiritual fruit in a disciple life is an alarming sign uh, because the Lord himself said by their fruit you shall know them.
if we do not bear such fruit uh, after become Christian for a while, perhaps it's critical uh, uh, to search our heart and our life. You say he's the vine, we are the branches. In order for the branches to bear fruit, the, the, the nutrient or the sap must flow freely from the vine to the branches. Uh, so uh, our fruitlessness could be due to the, the blockages of this flow. Uh, let's try to identify some of the possible cause of these blockages here. Number one, uh, could it be due to our pride, our self-loving and feeling superiority that we look down to uh, those who are lower social standing and those of a weaker faith than us uh, rather than to accept them and to carry their weaknesses. When a brother or sister going off path, do we judge them harshly or do we restore them gently? Number two, could it be due to our self-centeredness, our lack of love and empathy towards others? Uh, do we love our neighbor as ourselves? When was the last time we rejoiced with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep? Number three, could it be due to our, our doubt, our lack of faith uh, in God's power and holiness? Even though God promised to uh, give us justice, uh, to vindicate it, as He would say, vengeance is His, He will repay. But yet we choose to uh, repay evil with evils and we curse those who persecuted us. Number four, could it be due to our quarrelsome and critical spirit that uh, with a loose tongue that we like to spit out uh, harsh things to hurt people? Uh, uh, do we criticize those who have a different opinion or have a different way of doing things uh, for things matter that's non-essential to gospel? Uh, do we, as far as depend on us, uh, seek peace with all people? And number five, could it be due to our partial submission to God's word? We only do it when it's convenient for us. Let the warning word of Jesus ring in our ear. Why do you call me Lord and do not do what I say? These are just a short list of uh, the work of the flesh that is constantly raging uh, against our spirit. We must therefore, uh, especially when in conflict or moment of weakness, react in spirit, uh, choose to take the side and walk with the spirit and not to react in flesh and to give in to the flesh and to it last. So I say walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desire of the flesh. Galatians 5.16 Brother and sister, let's remember that uh, we are all sinners uh, deserving the wrath and judgment of God. Yet God uh, endure us with patient kindness and gentleness lavishing upon us his amazing uh, love and his, the riches of his glory and grace upon us in Christ Jesus. Uh, let's pray. Lord, we are so thankful uh, to Christ Jesus and for his meekness and his gentleness which draw us to you and save us and set us free. Uh, free to love you and be to follow you and abide in your words. Help us therefore to continue to bear this fruit of gentleness and meekness, to be empathy, Lord, to those who are in need with the heart of Jesus Christ and to overcome evil with good. To you are all the praises and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.